Installing directly to a concrete block wall can be achieved if the block wall is relatively plumb. If the block wall is not level, then using the Laticrete Premium Mortar Bed over the concrete block as a leveling coat might be warranted. When preparing a concrete block wall for a premium mortar bed, the first step is to clean your substrate. First, start by scraping the wall to get rid of any stuck-on debris from the construction site. Next, sweep off the dust and wipe down the wall with a sponge and water. Now you have a clean, smooth surface and can start your premium mortar bed application. Mixing Laticrete Premium Mortar Bed Start with about 5.5 quarts of water in your bucket, then add about half the bag of mortar. Using a slow speed mixer, mix it up, add the second half, and mix again. Add small quantities of water until the final mix reaches a smooth, trowelable consistency. Let the mortar slake, or in other words, sit to react with the water, for 5 to 7 minutes. After the slaking period is over, remix the mortar. It's important to remember to never add water after the slaking period is over. First, load the mortar onto your trowel and apply it to the wall. Skim it across the surface and really work it into your substrate. The goal here is to fill any voids in the wall. This should be a thin coat covering 100% of the wall. Applying a skim coat is optional, but it can be used to fill the raked joints and any small holes. It's done to achieve better coverage with the air and water barrier. If the concrete wall is relatively plumb with few imperfections, then the wall will not need to be leveled with anything. If a small amount of leveling or plumbing of the wall is required, then the Laticrete High Bond Masonry Veneer Mortar can be used to float and smooth the walls up to a maximum of 3 eighths of an inch thick. If the leveling or plumbing of the wall must be more than 3 eighths of an inch thick to accommodate out of plane repairs, then the Laticrete Premium Mortar Bed to float in smooth walls should be used. Try to keep your construction joints in the wall as clean as possible. It'll make things easier when you're treating the joint afterwards. When you've completed the skim coat and it is cured, use the flat edge of your trowel to smooth over the entire surface, removing any mortar peaks left behind. Use a drill to clear away any mortar that might have gotten into your construction joint. If you have any penetrations coming through the wall, you need to first fill the surrounding gap with backer rod. Then use the paintbrush to apply the flashing mortar, which will completely seal the opening. Once the flashing mortar has dried, it's time to apply the air and water barrier. Apply two coats, each 15 to 22 mils thick. When you reach a penetration, overlap the air and water barrier with the flashing mortar to reinforce the seal. You can check the thickness by using a film gauge. Drag it about an inch down the wall and check your read. When you reach a construction joint, apply a layer of air and water barrier, then line the joint with the fabric strip, and roll back over it with the air and water barrier. Try to roll out any air bubbles. Make sure you really get into the construction joint with the air and water barrier using a paintbrush. Continue on with the rest of the wall and wait for it to dry. You'll know a coat is dry when it is changed to more of an olive green color. When the first coat is dry, apply the second coat using the same thickness. Once the second coat is dry, you can start to mix your polymer modified pre-bagged mortar from Laticrete. Mixing polymer modified pre-bagged mortar from Laticrete. Start with about 5.5 quarts of water in your bucket, then add about half the bag of mortar. Using a slow speed mixer, mix it up, add the second half, and mix again. 
Add small quantities of water until the final mix reaches a smooth, trowelable consistency. Once you're satisfied with the consistency, let the mortar slake for 5-7 to seven minutes. After the slaking period is over, remix the mortar. It's important to remember to never add water after the slaking period is over. Next, install your ledger board. A ledger board is a temporary support for the adhered veneer. Ledger boards can be created from several different products, such as metal or wood. The important characteristics for any ledger board is that it is straight and true, ensuring that it's not bowed or warped. The ledger board should be installed prior to the installation of the adhered veneer so that it creates a ledge for the units to sit on to provide support to the units until the high bond masonry veneer mortar has cured. It should be installed so that it is level and true. Once the high bond masonry veneer mortar has cured for a certain section and the adhered veneer is stable, the ledger board can be removed. When setting Aris tile, always start with the corner units and work your way towards the center of the wall. Now you're ready to butter the wall and install the stone. Working in sections, use the flat edge of your trowel to coat the surface. Next, use the notched edge to create grooves in the wall. Once the wall is ready, back butter the units, filling all surface irregularities and ensuring 100% coverage. When you set the stone, squish and slide the unit back and forth to set it, and then continue on to the next stone using the same process. Continue up the wall. Use 3 8 of an inch spacers to maintain an equal gap between tiles. Set profile arras and smooth arras the same way by back buttering the wall, the unit, and then using spacers to maintain a 3 8 of an inch gap. When cutting end units to size, use a water saw. Then clean the face of the unit using a sponge and clean water. After you cut a rock arras tile, you must re-rock the end. Use a hammer and chisel and chip away the arras to finish the unit. Use your water saw to cut smooth arras tile and profile arras tile, always remembering to clean the face with the sponge and clean water afterwards. To cut Aris profile corner units, simply tilt the blade on the water saw 45 degrees. Clean with a sponge and water, and then you're ready to set. To treat your control joints in the wall, first fill the joint with backer rod, then caulk the joint with sealant, and run your finger back through the joint to smooth it out. Once this is complete, the last step is to point the rest of your joints. Use the laticrete pointing mortar and mix the bag with about two quarts of water. Add small quantities of water until the final mix reaches a smooth, trowelable consistency. Once it's well mixed, let it slake for five to seven minutes and then remix the mortar. Never add water after the mortar has slaked. Next, take a pointing bag and cut the tip to the size of the joint. Fill the bag with the pointing mortar and point your joints. Make sure you fill the joint right to the face of the tile. When you've pointed all of your joints, let the mortar set until it's thumbprint dry. Then go back through and tool all of your joints with a wooden dowel. Using light pressure, pack the mortar back to finish the joint. Lastly, wipe away any excess with a hard bristled brush and then lightly sweep away any remaining debris with the soft bristled brush. <laughs>